play this Jets team right now? And how do you back this Broncos team? Have you seen their faces? Hey everybody, what's happening? I'm Brandon Tierney. This is week seven of Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is brought to you by BetMGM. Now, what's the drill? Pretty simple. Each week, two of the internet's best sports bettors compete against each other to make you some scratch. We'll find the best bets for week number seven. I'll decide who earns the cash and at the end of the show, throw down one big bet for Sunday night Steelers-Dolphins game. Now, last week, both Sal and Danny lost their big bet, so they both got to choose each other's new profile pick, and, well, let's see what they went with. Fortunately, me and Sal came out losers, so we got to pay the host, Brandon, and, well, his squad is the Jets. Loser has to change their profile picture. And now you see here, Sauce Gardner with the cheese head will be rocking on my Instagram for a little bit. So, there you go, Brandon. Gotta love it. Man it up, both guys, as expected. How about Brasco rocking the Sauce Gardner cheese head? He's a Giants fan. That had to hurt. And how about my man, Lakata? Little Aaron Judge, big Mets fan. Like it. All right, let's get it rocking. Time to meet the competitors, the foes, the adversaries. First up, Chelsea. Let's rock it, Chelsea. How you doing? Yeah, I'm a former college athlete. Swam in college, so I'm excited to get a win today because I'm very competitive. But I hate losing, so I think that is first for me. So I love winning, but I hate losing, which is tough in betting. But we'll, we shall see. Yeah, I, I don't like losing either. I, I agree. John, I don't think you like losing, but... Uh, we all lose if you do it long enough. What's happening, buddy? Welcome to the show. I do not like losing, but also I was not a former college athlete. Just minimal high school athletics for me. And happy to be here. Really hoping this game show is more competitive than NFL football right now. Hoping it's better than that. All right, guys. We call the quick fire. Now, New York football teams look pretty good so far. Giants 5-1. and one. Jets coming off a big win in Lambeau. The Giants are plus three down in Jacksonville. The line for the Jets has moved favorably for New York. They're plus one now out in Denver. So a lot of money early on on the, on the, on the New York Jets. Chelsea, of the two teams, Jets or the Giants, which line do you like better? Yeah, both of these lines look like traps. And I like both of them. And both of these are going to be big public plays. However, the matchup that looks the worst is probably the Giants going to Jacksonville because they actually have a very good run defense, a top five run defense in Jacksonville. Not great when the focal point of your offense is Saquon Barkley. So I'm going to go with the Jets here going against a Broncos team that if you watch their last game, even before the game was over, they looked like they had lost. This team does not have a heart. Okay, John, what about you? I will not be afraid to counterpoint ever, but honestly, I completely agree. I'm worried that the number is too much of a public line, but at the same time, the Broncos' strength and allowing a league low in passing touchdowns doesn't matter in this game since Zach Wilson returned in week four and the baby Jets, as Robert Sala calls them, have only averaged 25 pass attempts per game as they become a more run-heavy offense around Brees Hall. Given that the Jets are playing tremendous defense as well against Russell Wilson in this offense, Russell Wilson, who's actually made more starts than passing touchdowns he's thrown this year six to five I believe in the Jets to win out okay I'm with you guys you know I'm not even saying I don't like the Giants line I think the Giants do enough things where they'll certainly be um, within shouting distance in the fourth quarter the Jets are a better team right now and I think what you've got to do is suspend the all oh, same old Jets or all oh, the Jets were uh, overachieving put on the film the Jets D line is destroying people the Jets secondary is very good and they're controlling the football I agree 30 bucks each your way let's keep it moving this one is for $35, guys. And right now, according to BetMGM, which team that is not leading their division has the shortest odds to make the playoffs? John, what's your answer? I'm going to guess books are backing the supposed return of Dak Prescott, and thus, I'm going to guess the Cowboys have the shorter odds. Okay, so that you're with Dallas. Uh, Chelsea, how about yourself? Shortest what? odds. No. Have they? Have you seen the Eagles playing? It can't be the Cowboys. It has to be the Packers, right? People still believing in Aaron Rodgers despite the Vikings being 5-1. I'm going to go with the Packers. Uh, John, I'm with you. First of all, you have it right. So 35 points on John. We'll put that on the scoreboard. I'm with you in terms of literally being right. And my personal opinion, I think you're right. This one's for 40. We bump up another five. So right now, BetMGM has two players tied at plus 500 odds for favorites to win the Offensive Player of the Year award. Give me one of them. Let's get 50%. Chelsea, what's your guess? Uh, let's go Justin Jefferson, Saquon Barkley. 
Well, we just need one. We've got, we're going to go with your first one. We uh. have Chelsea with Justin. And John, how about you? Which way are you going? Jalen Hurts since... I imagine he is tied with Josh Allen right now in a debate for either MVP or Offensive Player of the Year. You guys are good. You guys are good. You each nailed one. The two answers, Jalen Hurts and then Justin Jefferson, each with a $40 deposit Mm. into the account. Nicely, you can celebrate a little bit. You can celebrate. You can ham it up. Nicely done. Last one. Here's the deal. Chelsea, you've got to name eight players from a team. Eh, Pretty easy, right? The catch, though, is that John gets to identify the team, and you've got 30 seconds to do it. So, John, hit us with the team. Chelsea, start hitting us with the names. I'll be a bit tougher because the 49ers use a lot of players, but I'm curious how many Chelsea can actually name. Niners, okay, let's go. All right, start with the quarterbacks. We've got Trey Lance, we've got Jimmy G, we have Jeff Wilson Jr., we have Brandon Ayuk, we have Kyle Juszczyk, we have... George Kittle, we have Trent Williams, the All Pro, and we have Nick Bosa. Woo! Uh, how many am I at now? You are in the winner's circle, girl. Tap out, John. She got you. She got you. Nicely done. All right, we've got a tight one here. Chelsea 120, John 105. We keep it moving. Segment number two, we call it Did They Know? This will be fun. On Monday, we ventured out to a Seattle Seahawks bar, found a couple Seattle fans, threw a little trivia at them. By the way, each one of these is $40, okay? And your task is to determine whether or not you think they got the question right. First up, let's meet Chris. Yeah, Chris Kim. <laughs> uh, favorite Seahawks memory was uh, watching uh, DK catch his first touchdown ever. Love that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Chris, a big Seattle fan. We asked him this. What year was Seattle born as an expansion team? What was their first year in the NFL? The answer, 1976. Chelsea, do you think he gets this right? No, this sounds like a hard question. I feel like if you're not alive for this to happen, like I only know this about the Titans because it was like 1997 and I was alive. I don't think he knows this. Oh man, you're supposed to know what team you came to, what what year your team came to existence. John, help me out. He's got to know this, right? I don't think he knows this. If we walk into a bar in any town and ask a local what their team came into, t- came into existence. I don't know if they can answer that question. Oh my goodness. I, yeah, if the team was born in 1896, it might be tough. This was in the 70s. Let's see if he got it right. So like, 70, 75, 20, 76? 76, <laughs> I told you guys, sometimes you got to trust the host. Sometimes you got to trust the instincts of a big time fan. You got to know what team you were, but if you don't know what year you were born in, you ain't a fan. Zero points for you guys. None. Uh, Let's meet Steven. He's up next here, guys. You are here with Steven Flowers uh, from Bronx, New York City. My favorite Seahawks memory, uh, I recently moved to New York about a month ago and I worked at a restaurant called Kiwis, but we had such as many fans that we had as Feles, and they always would scream every touchdown, see Hawks. All right, Steven seems like a good guy. So the question this is what we pose Steven's way. This is a little tricky to be honest with you. What was the closing line for the Patriots and Seattle Super Bowl 49? What was the closing line? John, do you think he gets it right? Given that he is hardcore enough to know the true Seahawks chant whenever they score touchdowns, I'm going to believe in Steven. I'm going to think he gets it correct. All right, little faith and energy towards Steven. Chelsea, how about yourself? No, this guy's favorite football memory is a chant. It has nothing to do with the fact that they won a Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? This is like somebody saying their favorite Super Bowl memory is the halftime show. So, no, I don't think he got this right. All right, Chelsea, I'm inclined to side with you. The answer, by the way, is pick him. And let's see if he got this one right. Minus three, New England. He's correct. He was a pick him. Pick him. That's right. All right. I got to tell you, for somebody who was wrong, he was quite definitive in, in the way he, he relayed his answers. So he had to try to slip one through there or not. But Chelsea, you got it. 40 points for you. John, you got a donut on that one, buddy. All right. Finally, we've got Elizabeth. Let's see what she's bringing to the table. 
I'm Elizabeth Copeland, and I'm from Seattle, Washington. Actually, my favorite memory is walking in downtown Seattle after the Super Bowl win. And my favorite part of that was actually noticing how the streets were blocked, but the fans were out in spades and enjoying themselves and realizing we were all very calm because, let's face it, weed is very popular in the Seattle area. Uh, you can also say it depends upon what kind of strain you get there. Maybe a little sativa got you hopped up, but that's besides the point. I like the memory. Now, that's a fan that I can hang with. You win the Super Bowl, you hit the streets. All right, good feel for, uh, for Elizabeth. So let's get to the question. Now, we asked Elizabeth this. According to BetMGM, the current odds for Seattle to win the Super Bowl are A, we've got plus 50,000, B, plus 40,000, C, plus 25,000. Chelsea, do you think she gets this one right? Uh, no, because this is a hard one. They're all long odds. So, yes, she has multiple choice answers, which helps her a little bit. Maybe she guesses and gets it right, but I don't think so. All right, not even four options. It's three, so a better percent. John, what are you doing here? I genuinely don't think Elizabeth knows what sports betting is at all, but I want to party with her and support her in every endeavor of life. So I am <laughs> backing Elizabeth and think she gets it right. All right, I like the logic. Let's see if it pays off. Go ahead. Oh, it's got to be 50000 You are correct. Oh, no, that was correct. an easy that one. That was an easy one. But the, the uh, story of our demise is greatly exaggerated. We will be back. Not this year, you won't. But I got to tell you, <laughs> maybe greatly exaggerated is the, uh, the killing of brain cells of weed. She got it right. All right, John, your conviction paid off. You a little, little, little blind faith, but you got the 40 bucks right there. Have faith in your friends, and more importantly, Elizabeth, call me. All right, let's keep it moving. Now we move to best pickup line here, guys. By the way, updated scoreboard. Chelsea set the pace. She's done well. She's got 160. John, a little, little late push, 15 mm. behind. He's got 145. All right, this is the deal. This is simple. I'm going to pick out three marquee games. I'm going to throw them to you. You're each going to give me one of your locks from that specific game. Okay, could be anything. And the right answer gets you 50 bucks. Uh, John, you're first. Colts, Titans, hit us with something good. Since we are having to be riskier, I will then go over Matt Ryan passing attempts because of what we saw and the change in their offense from Frank Wright. Matt Ryan dropped back 64 times, yes, but the Colts ran a league high, no huddle rate, passed at the league's highest rate from neutral game script, and more importantly, delivered more quick throws. Ryan averaged the highest rate of his season and time from snap to throw. So I think he's going to just drop back quickly, three-step drops, get rid of the ball quickly. Thus, that leads to more volume and Ryan reaching his prop over. Yeah, pace of play. It's an interesting thing, uh, thing to hang your hat on. Chelsea, what do you have? Yeah, same line of thinking. They're trying that fast release, almost what they were doing with Big Ben in Pittsburgh. When he had a terrible offensive line, they're getting rid of the ball quickly. And it's working. So I'll go Matt Ryan over his passing yardage also because the Titans matchup here is a good one for the Colts. I think mm -hmm. the Colts are going to be throwing the ball here. Okay, I, I agree that they're going to throw. I'm going to give John the 50 bucks, though. I feel more confident that there will be a lot of attempts. I'm not so sure the efficiency with Matt Ryan, who's still kind of hit or miss week to week, week, to week for me. Uh, that's too much of a gamble. So I can't put a lot of energy behind the yards. While I do think he'll throw the ball a lot, John, 50 spot. Nice, nicely done. Nicely done. All right, listen, I'm going to tell you right up front, brownie points available. Jets at the Broncos. You know who I root for. Chelsea, hit me with something here. Fix something good. What do you have? Well, why not just play the normal game, the straight-up spread? I think that's the best bet on the board because Go how, do you, how do you fade this Jets team right now, and how do you back this Broncos team? Have you seen their faces? Did you see the close-ups of Broncos players on the sidelines during that primetime game? And none of them looked like they wanted to be there. They looked like they already lost the game before the game was over. Melvin Gordon looks a, a mess. Now it's in the hands of Latavius Murray. Are you kidding me? Russell Wilson's banged up. I don't think there is a way that you trust this Broncos team, even though they have one of the better defenses in the NFL. But still, mm -hmm. I'm going to ride with the Jets. John, I'm going to tell you right out of the shoot here, straight up. You better come up with something good because everything I heard, I'm liking and I'm agreeing with. Go ahead, John. Well, I believe your 
Jets, Brandon, win the game overall. But I'm still going to take a different approach, go to the Broncos offense, and say I believe in Jerry Judy over receiving yards since he's fresh off a season high, 25% target share from Russell Wilson. But more importantly, it's about what Sauce Gardner has been doing to opposing teams' number one wide receivers. Just seven yards allowed to Mike Williams last week against the Chargers, and also the fourth lowest catch rate in the entire league allowed among all cornerbacks. Thus, that tells me it's Judy who's going to be more involved and so I want to bet on those over-receiving yards since we expect Sutton to be shut out by, again, your favorite cornerback. He is tremendous. The, the fourth overall pick out of Cincy. I mean, he looks like a future star. But Chelsea, you're going to bag the 50 spot there. John, good Thanks. logic. I, I, I understand where you're going, but I think you're minimizing the importance of DJ Reed, who's 25 years old and probably a player Seattle should have held on to. DJ Reed is really good, so I think he can... And Judy drops a lot of passes, so... I hear mm -hmm. you, but we got the 50 spot to Chelsea. Let's go. All right, final check of the scoreboard before all zeros hit. Chelsea, 210. John, 195. This is tight. We move it on to the big one for all the marbles. But before we do that, we always play for something. We always play for something that's embarrassing. We got to make another side bet. Chelsea, what are you guys playing for? Yeah, even though I won't be losing, uh, John, here's what you're going to be doing. You're going to have to sing the reason why you lost on the show. So good luck, my friend. Hope you were in chorus in high school. Oh, boy. Okay, John, what's the uh, what's the what's the volley back? What are you going to make Chelsea do? Little did you know, Chelsea, that although I was not playing college athletics, it was because I was in college theater. So singing Ooh. is actually just fine. And honestly, if I'm allowed to, can we go back with that punishment? Can she also have to sing if she loses the let bet? Me, let, let me let me confer with the boss, which which is me. Um, yeah, we're okay with that. Why not? I like it. Yeah, I'm not losing. Not worried. Okay. Keep it moving. We're uh, on to Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Belichick, I've got you. Time for the big one. So, this is the final round here, guys. It's wrapped around Sunday night's game. We've got the Steelers and the Dolphins. One big bet. Slice it however you want. Whoever's got the most money on Monday wins. Uh, John, you trail. Why don't you go first? Most guests show up and put all of their points and money on one bet. I'm going to be a little bit different and hold back at least one point and one dollar. That's it. The rest is going on the Dolphins money line. The Dolphins covering this game because what we've seen for the Dolphins that they've suffered an in-game quarterback change for four consecutive weeks now, even though the last two weeks, their results, the Jets won 40 to 17, but the Dolphins only trailed by two points with less than 10 yep. minutes remaining after losing yep. Bridgewater, Tyreek Hill, and Teron Armstead. And then last week, the Dolphins forced the Vikings into 10, 10 three and outs still lost because of Jalen Waddle's fumble in the second half. And so since the Steelers are now starting, Mitch Trubisky, they remember average less than five yards per play in Trubisky's first four starts. So I think the Dolphins run over the Steelers this week. Interesting. Judicious, by the way, keeping a point in your back pocket. A little price is right. You know, the showcase showdown going a dollar kind of, I, I, I got, I got that. That's interesting. Chelsea, what are you doing? Yeah, only one dollar for me because honestly, I hate this game. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go with the under here. Primetime unders have been really hot this season, 13 and 6. And overall, unders have been really hot in the NFL, 56, 37 and 1 this year. And do I really want to trust the likes of the Pittsburgh offense? And the thing is, the red zone defense has actually been uh, all right, top 10 when it comes to touchdown scoring percentage. So I don't really want to pick a side here because seven points is a lot to lay in the NFL, especially when you have a low total. So points are at a premium. I'm going to go with the under here. All right. Hey, listen, uh, any party shots, any uh, words of advice, wisdom, little jabs, anything you guys want to say before before we bounce? Yeah, I'm mad that I didn't get any points on my Matt Ryan passing prop. He had 356 yards against the Titans last time out, and you didn't Great. give me any points. And I'm mad hey, about listen. that. Yeah, well, you, you know, you can be mad all you want. You, you, you can't circle back and ask and beg for points. So, John, what about you? I can't wait to hear how Chelsea's voice sounds. Huh? Get those vocal cords ready, he's saying. Well, listen, guys, awesome show. Very nicely done. May the best person win. 
Have a good time this weekend. And that'll just about wrap it up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below with your locks for the week. And make sure to head over to thegameday.com for the latest offers from BetMGM. Have an awesome week. And we'll catch you next week right here. Minimal sweats, of course, on the show.